The first part of the construction sequence is to drive piles into the shallow riverbed ensuring a strong foundation. Sheet piles surround that site forming a cofferdam. Water is pumped out creating a dry working environment. The pile cap is formed and poured. Now the pier is formed. Notice the inverted arch at the top. This will create the lower part of the serpentine shape. Concrete is poured and the cofferdam is cut and removed. The deck is formed of very dense reinforced concrete. Steel braces are used to reinforce the cantilevered areas. Now a temporary false work is installed and boat traffic is diverted to the west side of the channel. Prefabricated box girders are erected and joined together atop the temporary false work. A special crane is constructed that will lift the arches into place and temporary scaffolding is used to support the special frames called spider frames. These frames tie the five pipes together, thus spreading the suspender load uniformly to all five pipes and serve as a point of anchorage for the group of suspender strands. The crane assists in placing spider frames atop the temporary scaffolding and then adding the pipes from both ends finally meeting in the center. At each panel point, there are six structural strands arranged in two groups of three each side of the bridge cross section. Each strand is 44 millimeters in diameter. The temporary false work can now be removed, allowing steel braces to be fitted underneath the cantilever sections and the deck sections are constructed. To enhance the dramatic effect of the dragon's unique panorama, decorative dragon scales are mounted along the flowing arches of the dragon's body. Railings, light poles, and pavement are added. Construction is completed with the mounting of the head and tail at each end of the bridge. The dragon's head comes with a surprising ability to breathe a stream of water and mist, and as any dragon, a blast of billowing flame.